Good morning and welcome to this second Sunday after Christmas Day. And on this Sunday, we are celebrating, continuing to celebrate the Christmas season. And our Feast of Epiphany will be next Sunday. So uh, because of the calendar this year, this is actually the second Sunday after Christmas. I invite you to follow along with our bulletin, especially welcoming our friends and parishioners at home worshiping with us today. The bulletin can be found in the comments section, and we invite you to follow along by downloading it through the newsletter or the comments section. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. With you. Wait, I'm having microphone issues here. Hang on one second, guys. It is full. You know, they just don't put pockets in the right places in women's clothing, just saying. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. Please join me in saying today's collect. Oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. <clears throat> The first lesson is from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by the brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn the mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm appointed is Psalm 84, and we will say it responsively by verse. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. 
My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. A sparrow has found her a house, and a sparrow met a young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of God shall reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold, O Lord, defender of God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield, and he will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power before us who believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We will sing only the first three verses of 1098. Thank mm -hmm. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. 
Glory to you, Lord. After the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. And remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea <coughs> in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarean, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. So I want to start off by naming that the way the church's readings fall on the dates of the calendar right now do not line up with a nice linear chronology of Jesus' life. The story in today's gospel actually happened after the wise ones from the east arrived. And that Epiphany feast day, as I mentioned, we'll be celebrating next Sunday. Of course, these days, you might reflect that not much does line up in a nice linear fashion, like in places like CBS, where Valentine's Day candy is already on display on this eighth day of Christmas. The Omicron variant is, however, logically operating like a highly contagious virus. What we expected to be doing for this New Year's weekend or Christmas or anytime soon in private and public indoor gatherings, some of which have already been upended, however many people we know are exposed to COVID or actively contagious or quarantining. What we do here in today's gospel is that God is not interested, really, in linear, logical ways of operating in the world. Joseph has already been pushed past his culture's limits, and from a place of his deep faith, married and already pregnant Mary. He hears the news of King Herod's murderous intentions toward his newborn son, not through a human messenger or somebody who knows somebody in Herod's court. The message is delivered by an angel of the Lord. By this time, Joseph has learned via Mary's visitation with the angel Gabriel, mm -hmm. and then the angels in the fields proclaiming the good news of Christ's birth, that God doesn't follow logical, linear, human ways to get things done. God can and will rely on dreams or angels to give new directions. The comfortable life Joseph thought he was going to build with his new family in his people's town, building up his carpentry work with his established network of kin. Well, guess what? It's time to protect the holy child. It's time to get up and to leave everything you know. Leave it behind. It's time to turn left into the dark unknown. That journey would take Joseph's family to Egypt and almost to Judea, but then Joseph's warned again mm -hmm. of Herod's son this time, who would also be searching for the child Jesus. The family ends up in Galilee, in Nazareth. Joseph's faith and trust 
trust in God that the child Jesus was indeed part of the divine plan that defied human logic, it's one of the sacred keys that unlock the doors of God's plan, God's love being made to us, breaking through to be God with us, Emmanuel, known to us and with us in human form. There was a period in my life where I was feeling a lack of something in my work in the fashion business, and I ached for something more meaningful. Part of my journey was deciding to go to law school and then eventually to become a judge. So I studied the guides to the law school admission test and practiced the test and retested multiple times, and I did great. But then when I got the results for the real test that was held for that year's LSAT, I discovered that my score was not high enough to get into most law schools. And I was baffled and devastated. Why carefully laid plans for the path to becoming a judge, dispensing justice in the way I thought it should be, that path was blocked and I needed to turn left. But then I had a dream. One of those clear cinema vision dreams where I saw the muddy, rocky trail I'd been walking that led to a courthouse on the hill. And then I saw myself face down on that trail, looking quite dead. On a different trail, away from the courthouse, was a beam of crazy colored lights that lit the horizon, and my dreaming self knew that was the direction I was supposed to take. And who knew, these 15 years later, that those crazy colored lights are just like the color of lights that shine through church stained glass. Who knew? Those glorious colors, like the ones we have here at Trinity, the ones we get to see every Sunday when we're able to be here. So when I became a priest, if there much learning about the Episcopal and Anglican tradition. A big signpost for me was studying the ministry and work of Anglican Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who many of you heard died this week. His commitment to following Jesus's way of nonviolence by organizing the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa was a major influence for me. And for me to become a follower of Jesus. Now, Tutu had already been a prophetic voice calling out the evils of apartheid and his activism for which he won a Nobel Prize. When Nelson Mandela became the first black president of South Africa, he called upon Tutu to take a different path in addition to the one he was on as the new Archbishop of Cape Town. And this new path for Tutu was to form the commission that would help restore a badly wounded nation. So Tutu led the listening and reconciliation work of the naming of the brutal acts that murdered and maimed so many of his country people. And he sobbed in front of the cameras as he held a witnessing presence to the stories of so much horrific violence. Stories that had to be told in order for forgiveness and accountability to happen. Tutu's deep faith as a follower of Jesus informed his radical, nonviolent commitment to amnesty for the perpetrators. And it was the divine hand of restorative justice working through Bishop Tutu and the commission when in some human logical ways of justice involving retaliation, revenge, and locking up the perpetrators forever, that would have been the norm. There have been countless detours this in the early two years of the global pandemic. In this Christmas season, I keep hearing stories of families kept apart again due to COVID exposure, 
quarantining and canceled airline flights. And we're also hearing of some of the 100,000 plus Afghani refugees now coming here, some to this area to be sheltered in the middle of the surge of the pandemic. And several of our deanery's churches are now beginning to offer support for safe shelter and a new life for those refugees. Like Joseph and his family having to flee their homeland because of threats to Jesus' life, many of these refugees have had to flee because they assisted the United States in important ways in our time at war there. The Taliban's form of justice is execution or life imprisonment without a legal process. The Afghan refugees have been living in terror and often with their financial resources cut off. In an interview Bishop Tutu gave while he was in dialogue with the Dalai Lama, Tutu named how deeply, deeply precious we all are to God. Even the despised refugee whose name no one seems to know. Bishop, Bishop Tutu said he looked frequently at pictures of people fleeing from violence, and there's so much of it. Look at the children. He said, I say that God is crying because that is not how God wanted us to live. But you see again, even in these circumstances, you have these people who come from other parts of the world to try to help, to make things better. And through the tears, God begins to smile. And when God sees you and hears how you try to help God's children, Tutu reassures us, God smiles. So in this new year, I would invite you to consider how you were called, perhaps, to turn left last year. Maybe lots of times, and then you had to turn right, and then you had to turn left, and then you had to detour, and then you had to... Think about those paths. And consider what God may have been calling you to do on that different path or paths. The more illogical by human standards, the better. And also ponder this. What lessons of faith and trust do you want to bring forward into this year? And I'll close with this blessing from Blessed Archbishop Tutu. God, who is forever pouring out God's whole being from all eternity, wants you to flourish. God wants you to be filled with joy and excitement and ever longing to be able to find what is so beautiful in God's creation. The compassion of so many, the caring, the sharing. And God says, please, my child, help me. Help me to spread love and laughter and joy and compassion. And you know what, my child? As you do this, hey, presto, you discover joy. Joy, which you've not sought, comes as the gift, is almost the reward for this non-self-regarding, caring for others. Let us stand and recite the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people on Christmas. O oh God, we gather as your holy family on this holy night. We celebrate your birth among us as a human child. We celebrate along with Mary and Joseph, who through their work of faithful parenting became part of your story of salvation. Holy child, yeah. Yeah. Hear our On the first Christmas, there was no room in the inn. Protect with your love those in our community who have no home tonight, who are living under bridges, in abandoned buildings, or in hostels. We pray especially for the homeless families with babies who bear the fragility of new life in hard and anxious times. Holy, Holy child, child, hear our prayer. prayer. The Messiah came with the sign of a star shining in the night. Bring light to those who are suffering from sickness, who endure pain in mind or body, especially those suffering from COVID-19. Holy child. Jesus was born in a stable, surrounded by the animals. He came as a savior for all creation. Bring healing and peace to our relationship with the earth. Renew our sense of the holy and give us wisdom to treat the world with respect and care. Holy, holy child, child, hear our prayer. The angels came with a message of good news in troubled time. We need your good news in the troubled parts of our lives, with family ties that are strained or broken. We need your good news in this time of the pandemics of COVID-19, racism, and the effects of climate change. We need your good news in our war-filled war world. We also pray for Bethlehem, for Palestine, and Israel, where high walls of many divides, many kinds divide your people. Holy child, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, praying especially for those on our prayer list. Evan, Bob, Judith, Sharon, Alma, Jerry, Joan, Jean, Ellen, Kathy, Virginia, Barbara, Louise, Anne, Lynn, Ron, Steve, and Gracia, Dan, Raylan, Cynthia, Mike, Judy, Joyce, Jack, Frank, and Lenny, and our shut-ins, Gil, Ralph, and Jane. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Holy, Holy child, child, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. The shepherds were commissioned to spread tidings of great joy, a joy that can reach even those sitting in the shadow of death. At this holy time, we remember those we love who have died. We know that in your grace, they too are part of this choir of praise. We join our voices with them and with the hosts of heaven in praising you now and forever. Hallelujah. Christ, Christ the, the Savior, Savior is, is born. born. Amen. We pray also for the repose of the soul of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. We give thanks for his life of vision, of ministry, and serving the way of peace. 
We ask, dear Christ, that you embrace him and his family and all those who mourn in your deep love. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we will actually not be doing the confession at this time. So I invite you into Christ's peace, the peace of the Lord be also with you. And also, also with you. Peace to everyone who's with us, who's worshiping with us at home. Peace, peace, peace. So we're still here meeting in person as of right now. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be able to have coffee hour for a while until uh, things calm down a little bit. Hopefully, pray on that for the Omicron. Um, we are uh, using the mask mandate continually from the diocese and now the city of Melrose has uh, initiated a mask mandate actually starting tomorrow. So all of our indoor gatherings and uh, people coming in and out of the building will be required to continue to wear masks. Thank you so much for helping to keep us all safe. Um, we also are still raising funds for our Ann Kenny Scholarship Fund. Uh, really need to have those funds uh, reinst reinstated because we are supporting three students right now as they continue in their journey of their college education, students of color who we are lifting up in uh, part of our mission of helping to overcome the effects of racism. And we also have Julie O'Grady heading up that fund. And so if you have any questions, please see Julie. You can write a check and send it to the office, or you can give on WeShare and designate the scholarship fund in that category on WeShare online. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given.
We'll continue with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer A in your bulletin. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made flesh, the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, almighty God, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior. by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our mother, mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ. 
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So we'll have a brief moment of silence and contemplation of Eucharist with spiritual communion with our folks worshiping at home. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. So let us continue with the after communion prayer in your bulletin. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. <clears throat> Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon God, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the good news of the Savior's birth, 
fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you divine peace and favor. Amen. And blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier be upon you and remain with you and in you forever. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the newborn Christ, seeking him, serving him, and all that we meet. Alleluia. 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 Mm -hmm. 